Today is another follow-up video for the Rymetrix orbitals. This time I am testing the efficiency of the covers versus the bare alloy wheels over a 444 mile trip. Here I am getting ready for my wife and I to take a weekend trip to Williamsburg, Virginia, and with our bags in the trunk. On the way to the destination, I will have the orbitals installed, and on the return trip, I will remove them. In this video, I will be covering the charging info on the Tesla screens, on Scan My Tesla, and also in the Stats app on my iPhone. Looking at the screen, the car has hit 100% charge just before leaving, and the range is listed at 301 miles. Moving over to the Scan My Tesla app that is running on my Samsung tablet, this is the battery page. You can pause it if you need to look at specific numbers including the state of charge, nominal full pack range, cell temperature, etc. Note 101% probably has to do with the BMS not being calibrated. I have the Stats app on my iPhone, and here are some of the things it tracks. Estimated range is the nominal value, and the rated range is the nominal full pack value. The 101 versus 100% seen in the Scan My Tesla app probably accounts for the difference between these two numbers. The next chart shows range added on a daily basis. And the following chart shows driving efficiency and MPGE over the miles driven. Then we have miles driven over the past 30 days. And then this chart shows the charge curve over the last charging session. Next is the battery health, which can determine the BMS estimated miles on a full charge. I'll be covering this in a future episode, especially with regard to degradation. When zoomed into the last value, it is around 300 miles or so. Phantom drain is the miscellaneous things that draw power from the car while it is not being driven. This used to be a big number when I first bought the car, but now it is very small due to system updates over time. The third tab shows how this car relates to others in the Tesla fleet with regard to efficiency on the top chart and phantom drain on the next chart. Here is a histogram of the system firmware in the fleet. Interesting to see which ones are most installed. And lastly, a chart shows efficiency across users. Before driving, I enter the destination into the navigation page. You can see it as 214 miles. It will take about three hours and 13 minutes. And at the end of the trip, the battery pack will have 13% left. Going into the energy page and then on the trip screen, the car starts at 100% and will linearly go down to 13% as shown on this chart. I'm also going to do a comparison between the Tesla navigation and a better route planner. Its results are very similar. However, its ending battery percentage is 18%, 5% more than Tesla expects. We will see which one is more accurate after I get to Williamsburg. Here is a list of the test conditions. I tried to limit the variability between the two portions of the drive as much as possible. I will try to keep a 70 mile per hour speed while driving with cruise control on. The HVAC is set to 68 degrees Fahrenheit with the AC on and fan speed of 4. Tires are at 42 PSI and get up to 45 PSI during the drive. I made sure that the Tesla wheel setting was correct with the 18 inch wheel with aero cover installed. Luckily the weather on both travel days was almost identical, partly sunny, lower 60 to mid 70 degrees Fahrenheit with very little wind. Here is a hundred times sped up version of the trip to Williamsburg. I'll be back when this ends to discuss the results of part one.
And here are the results. The Tesla energy chart shows a nice increase of efficiency over the length of the trip. Instead of the original estimate of 13% battery left, the final number is 21%. This is the Scan My Tesla battery page after the drive, showing a lot more detail about the different components and signal details. And now going to a better route planner, this shows an ending value of 17%, which is much closer to the actual number than the Tesla beginning estimate of 13%. Here is a summary, 53.2 kilowatt hours used, 219.1 miles driven, and 244 watt hour miles. We will see how this compares to the return trip. Before the return trip to Raleigh on Sunday, I visited a V3 supercharger the night before the drive, and I charged up to 95%. Here's another view of the iOS Stats app on my phone. At 95%, I have an estimated range of 260 miles and a rated range of 279 miles. On the battery health screen, the last number is now a little over 300 miles. The next morning I went to a destination charger and filled up to 100% just before leaving. This is the charge page. Even though it says 30 minutes are remaining, it's pretty much fully charged at this point. And again, a view of the Scan My Tesla battery signal page. The Tesla trip screen shows an estimated 11% when arriving at the destination. I also removed the orbital wheel covers and put them in the trunk. I adjusted the Tesla service page to change the wheel configuration to an 18-inch wheel without the aero cover. Here is a 100 times sped up version of the trip back to Raleigh. I'll be back when this ends to discuss the results of part two. And here are the results for part two. The Tesla energy chart shows a fairly straight line of efficiency over the length of the trip. Instead of the original estimate of 11% battery, the final pack number was 12%, only slightly more. Moving on to the Scan My Tesla battery page after the drive, this shows a lot more detail about the different components and signal details. Before I go to the final summary chart, I wanted to discuss elevation. I mapped out the elevation changes of the trip. The route starts at 320 feet and reaches a high of 427 feet and goes down to a low of zero feet, sea level. So no mountains or anything. The telling statistic is that the total elevation increases and decreases over this route there is a 6,313 foot increase and a 6,559 foot decrease in elevation. This is fairly even. Hopefully a few hundred feet elevation change will not affect the results too much. As shown before, this is a summary of the first part with the Rymetrix orbitals on. 53.2 kilowatt hours used, 219.1 miles driven, and 244 watt hour miles. The return trip results are here. 59 kilowatt hours used, 
224.5 miles driven and 264 watt hour miles. This results in a roughly 8% higher efficiency for the Rymetrix orbitals versus the bare alloy wheels. Although this is not a definitive test and there could be factors affecting it that I did not account for. I will also be doing more tests, specifically testing the orbitals on a trip versus the Tesla OEM aero covers. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.